Hello everybody, I'm going to make this um, video over the woody plants workshop, so I'm sorry I'm absent today. Um, so this is going to be a little in-depth, much more in-depth than my videos, or recap videos for the other workshops or for other content in the course. So please take your time as you go through this work, um, this video, make sure that you answer the questions associated with the play posit. You can go back and rewind if you need to, um, but take your time, please make sure that you pay attention if you... Anything in this video doesn't necessarily make sense, you're confused what I'm going over, please make sure that you ask me in class on the next day because I want to make sure that you understand what is required of you in terms of woody plants. Um, so more than happy you can watch this as a group in terms of woody plants, but I want each student to complete the play posit. Um, so make sure that you've at least got it playing. You could have one person playing with the audio while somebody else is playing it just so that they can answer the play posit questions. It's also just fine. Um, but anyways, let's get started. So this workshop is to help provide you with um, methods and techniques to use as you're collecting data, um, what data you're going to be collecting, and how you're going to be using that. So um, first thing, a few things. Um, you're not going to get your materials today because I'm not there in class yet. Um, I'll be giving them to you later in the week. Um, I'll go over a little bit about what is talk, what we're talking about in terms of transect placement, how you're collecting your data, how we use the key, um, and then I want you to practice using the key. Um, I won't be there to help you. Um, that's okay, I'll pull you another time to make sure that you understand what's required of you. Now, if you notice, after-school workshops for this are Monday, March 9th, and Wednesday, March 11th. So please make sure you put that in your calendar right now so that you know when that is, um, because you're going to bring your project notebook, you'll stay after school with me, um, we'll go do a practice transect, you'll collect data, I'll make sure that you write it down correctly, and then I'll see if you can actually ID the plants that we collected. Um, so please make sure that you put that down Monday, March 9th, Monday, March 11th. Two, make sure that you're taking notes on this or somehow keeping track of what's happening um, because there will be a quiz associated with this. Um, and then there's also going to be, as part of your next or your assignment that you just got today, um, becoming an expert on woody plants, and this will definitely help that. It also helps in terms of later, um, because it'll be a while before you actually start collecting data. And some of this will be a little foggy when you get begin collecting data, and I want to make sure that you don't forget that later on when we do that. Um, okay, so don't forget those dates in terms of the workshops. Materials that you're going to be using as a woody plant is you're going to really focus on these field guides. So if you want, I would just pause the video right now, and acquire these items. So the field guides, they should be on that gray aluminum cart with the fan on it. You should see a few of these white books that say Woody Plants of Austin. Um, if there are none there, you can go to the very back of the room, um, right above all the drawers with the colored pencils and tape and stuff. The cabinet directly above that right in the middle it'll say field guides if you open that you should be able to find a few of those white books um if not you're more than happy to go next door and ask miss kong if she'd give you one or two that you can use for this activity the other thing that i want you to probably pull up right about now is you can also go to blend and you'll see your project packet it'll detail everything that's required for you in terms of expectations to woody plants it goes over a little more detail in terms of the method that you're going to be using in terms of collecting data and what's expected of you. So I would pull that up so in case you need to reference it, you have it open on the screen. You can just open it in another tab. Now in terms of our um, field trips are common plants that you might see. Uh, I wanted to show you a few plants that you're definitely going to see out into the field. Um, here are several of them you're probably going to run into. Um, now if you look at A, well actually, take a second, answer the play posit question, see if you know any of these plants already. Good job, I hope you guessed maybe one of them right, or if you didn't get any of them right, that's okay. Um, A is Turk's Cap, it has that name because of the uh, reddish or resemblance of a Turkish cap. Um, it is not a woody plant, so if you see this anywhere in your transect, um, you're not going to collect it. You could note it on your data as like a nice, or in your notes about what you observed, but you're not going to collect it, or it's not going to be in your data collection because it's not a woody plant. B is ash juniper, ash a juniperus, um, very common. 
<clears throat> you'll probably see it in several places on your transect, and you'll definitely collect it. Um, it is a woody plant. Um, C is a common pest plant, you might say, um, and trying to remove that from your yard or um, land areas. Um, it is ragweed, and you can see that from, uh, we'll look at its pinnate leaves um, when we go on our field trip. Um, or palmate, sorry. Ragweed is also not a woody plant, so if you do see that on your um, transect or present uh, in your park, that's not something that you're going to be collecting. So hopefully you got a few of those right. If not, you'll get more familiar with plants as we move through uh, the semester. Now, I've been referencing this word transect, and you might have seen it a little bit earlier. Um, a transect is just that line of connection where we're collecting data. So for you guys, you're going to walk a transect, so a straight line, and you're going to collect plant samples along that line. Um, your transect placement needs to make sure that it's 50 meters long. So ensure later, when you go to your site visits, you'll ensure that you can fit 50 meters somewhere in the park. You're not, they're not as long in terms of uh, bird transects. Bird transects have to be a kilometer. Um, so be mindful, not every group is doing the same thing. Um, but you'll have your transect tape to help you assess how long that 50 meters is. Um, you want to make sure in terms of your transects that there's significant difference between them. So remember, you're going to be investigating a physical variable, um, whether that's distance to water, urbanization, what have you. And you want to make sure that the difference in urbanization, the difference in elevation, the difference in distance to water are significant for your data collection. Um, and make sure that your transects are placed throughout the park so that you get a rather diversified representation. In terms of transects, Every member in your group will be responsible for three transects. Um, this is an individual grade. So as part of your project, some of your grades are going to be group. Some of them will be individual. All data collection grades are individual. Um, they are not. So whatever your partner gets is not reflective of your grade. The only grade, um, some grades will be group grades. So the first group grade you're going to have is the introduction and research plan, which we'll be doing in two weeks. That'll be your first grade that is a group grade. Um, but these are all individual, so please make sure that you remember that. Um, <clears throat> and we'll talk a little bit about this later um, in terms of transect types. But again, just making sure that you have uh, representation of the park, significant difference in terms of your physical variable, and this other key, key, key point. Your transects have to have a minimum of 60% overhang. Now quickly, can you do the math? 60% of 50 meters is? Hopefully you got it, 30 meters. It needs to be 30 meters of overhang. What that means is that you need 30 meters of plants present on your transect. You can't just pick a transect in the middle of a baseball field or some field or open area. It has to have some sort of plant um, overhang. And we'll talk about that a little later. Now, we'll also be working with plotting those transects um, on an aerial photograph so that then you can reference later when you're in the field. Um, but we'll get to more of that later. So I want you to take a second um, and see if you can figure out where you might place your transects because students have a trouble figuring out where they're going to put them. Um, so I have two images here, um, study A and study B. The transects are labeled orange and red. Um, and they have various different placements. And it says the purpose is to investigate the impact of soil plant or uh, impact of soil type on plant growth. The purpose of the study is to impact the impact of soil type on plant growth. I want you to look at the photo or the images. You'll see that these images include topography. That's what the um, QAL, QEF, or QEF, KEF, and topography. You'll see the brown lines are showing topography. So take a second. Which one would you propose? Good, now let's see if you got it right. The answer should be study B. Now the question is, why is it study B? Well, if I look at study B and study A, well, let's look at study, well, both of them, that's fine. Let's just focus on 
geology. So if I notice study A, I have 2 in KEF, I have 2 in QAL, and I have 2, 1 in KTC and 1 K, in KEF. Okay, so I've got 3 in KEF in total, 1 in KTC, and 2 in QAL. Okay, that's one not good or necessarily good data collection because now I have an unequal number of transect or data from one explanation compared to the other. I have a lot more data from KEF versus KTC. That's one thing wrong. Two, the elevation is also drastically different between those. So I went from 400 to 500 to 600. So in study A, the students aren't just investigating explanations, they're also investigating topography because the elevation is changing per transects. In study B, they have two in, two per explanation, so we have an equal representation of the explanations, and we're also trying to keep it at a relatively constant elevation. Now, of course, the elevation is still changing, but definitely not as dramatic as study A. So keep in mind, your, place, your transect placement is very important um, later on when you're trying to figure out where to put them. We need to make sure that they have equal representation of the park, that we're trying to maintain other physical variables as constant and only changing the one we want to change, um, and we're making sure that they um, have some variability in where they are placed. So make sure you pay attention to that later on in placing your transects. Now I talked about having this minimum percent of overhang, 60%. Well, let's talk about your data collection. So first, you're going to travel to wherever this transect is. You'll put them, you'll map them on an aerial photograph. I'll show you how to do that. Um, we're going to try to help you using Google Maps and all trails to make sure that you're at the right location of your transect. So it shouldn't be a guessing where you're at in the park. You should be able to just look down your, at your phone and it'll tell you that you're right on where you're supposed to be. Next, um, you're going to make sure that you log your all trails. So you'll just hit record when you're on that um, transect. We'll practice this when we do it at the school um, in the after school workshop to make sure that you understand. Um, and then you'll just submit those logs as proof of data collection for me each time. Next, you'll make sure that you measure out and stretch the 15 meter transect because then you can just walk right along the transect. So every time bring that nice transect line with you. So you just use your phone, get to the point where your transect starts, get out your transect tape, pull it out in the same direction that's on your aerial photo photograph, walk it. That's all you need to do every time. Now, we're recording not just plants we see. We're recording plants that intersect our transect line. Um, which means that they cross this vertical plane that's coming up from our transect line. And it'll make more sense when we do this in real life. Um, and then you'll write all that down. So in terms of a data table, I want you to think about your transect as it's divided up into intervals. Now, I couldn't fit 15 meters here. I could, it just made it too um, tiny in terms of numbers, so I just put 40 meters. Um, you can see these are intervals. I wish that that just would not come up. Okay, sorry. Apologies, I'm trying to get that away. I just won't go down there. Wait, let's go to this. Um, down here you can see that there, the 0 to 40 meters is divided up into intervals. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So for example, if I see a species at, let's say, somewhere right around here, then I would record that that species, I might not know what it is, so I would write unknown something. Here, I'll show you an example. Um, I would write unknown something. The intercept range is how far it intersects the transect. So the entire plant intersects the transect for 10 meters. And then I would write down its intercept length, which is not correct. It should be 10 meters. Apologies. Um, and then I would write down the intervals that it intersects. So I can see that if I go back a slide, every, in this case, I have 8, 40 meters. So that means each interval is how many meters? Five, right? So I would record one, two, and since it is right on the line here, I also write down three. 
in terms of the intervals it's contained within. And then I would write down some comments about its explanation, um, details, characteristics that will help me identify it later. Um, and we'll explain a little bit more about what these mean later when we're after school working through them. Um, and then we take some rather general data down. What's the weather look like? Your date and time that you collected, which should associate with the all trails that you recorded. And you do that for all your plants. Some plants you'll get to know. The first transect will probably be kind of rough. You'll probably have mostly unknowns. That's totally fine. As you move along um, in the course when you get to data collection two and three, you have a lot more of these that are known. Now remember, if you have an unknown name, when you come to class, then you'll sit down and identify it. And after you identify it, you'll come back to your notebook, strike it, and write the new name. They can also do this um, online and digitally and keep track of them in um, Sheets or Google Sheets so that then it's a little easier to remember. Um, but it's up to you. Now I want you to take a second. I've got you two examples here. Example A and Example B. I want you to propose which one is correct data technique. Good job, hopefully you got it right. Um, if you look at this, the reason that example A is better is because example B says Texas Oak Mini Intercept Range. That's fine if they added those all up. But the trick becomes, we wrote Mini. We need to write down each of them because we have to associate each individual with how much intercept it resides with. Because this makes it look like you saw one Texas oak that was 10 meters long, which is totally probable, but it's not good data technique because we're trying to figure out how often the species resides there, um, how many times you might see it, um, and that's going to really help your data later on because we need to make sure that we record all of them. <clears throat> so now I also want you to see if you can record some data. So... Here I have two trees, this lighter green one and this darker green one. What I want you to do is indicate the interval you would record for tree theta. So this tree here. So take a moment. Good job. Now let's see if we got it right. So you should have indicated that tree theta has an interval starting here at 1, so it crosses interval 1, interval 2, interval 3, interval 4. You might have also put interval 5 because you can see right here there's some of that light green in the back, so it might extend into interval 5. This is one what we're talking about in terms of overhang and overlap. So a lot of your plants are going to overlap with each other. Um, and you're going to have to kind of estimate, guesstimate where that tree stops and begins or where that plant might um, stop and end. And you want to make sure that you include, even if they're overlapping, they're still separate pieces. So when I record the green tree, it's an interval, maybe partially three, because right there it looks a little green, four, five, six, and seven. Um, they're all very important um, in assessing what you have in terms of your tree. Now in terms of overhang, what I mean is I need to have 30 meters of my transect with plants that overhang it like this or come into contact with it. Um, so please ensure that you do that as you're working through the transects. So we can see here it does actually go into interval 5. Now I might not have been able to see this, this of course is a top view, but you might have been able to from a bottom view. Um, the other thing that you might be able to see, I don't know if this will work with me recording at the same time, um, is sometimes it's hard to figure out what the organism is. And you can see here, this student attempted... I don't know. Just climb up. Yeah, you're going to fall, but... be worth it to catch it on camera. What? No. So he started to do a great data technique by looking at the 
floor, but then he attempts another type of technique. Keep in mind the guy running. Go, go. You're almost there. Just <laughs> go. This entire, like, thing. <laughs> so, oops, sorry. That is one way to collect specimen that are hard to reach because some of your specimens are going to be high up. Now, I would not advise that this be the way that you collect specimen. So remember, leaves don't stay on trees forever, right? They normally fall off. So he started out a great way in ensuring looking down at the bottom of the ground to see is there any um, leaves down there that might associate with that organism. Um, so then I can look at it later in class. You don't have to necessarily climb the tree. Something else that also might work is you can get leaf specimens from the ground and then take out your phone and take a picture of the specimen. Just make sure that you note somehow in your images, whether you annotate the image or you write down details in your notes, um, so that you can differentiate between the pictures because the worst thing is is when you come into class and then you've got a hundred pictures of plants and you're not even sure which one associates with which in terms of your data collection. So please make sure that you somehow label them so that you have them. So a lot of people think that they're just studying plants. Well, you're not just studying plants, you're only studying woody plants. Um, and what makes a woody plant is in terms of what's inside of it. So woody plants have this secondary, so you see xylem, heartwood, sapwood, um, they have this secondary xylem present. Um, and what that means is that they are using their dead cells to create this layer of protection and support. Um, instead of being hollow on the inside, they're continuing to produce layers um, that allow it to create support. So a woody plant has that secondary xylem present. And you can see that in some examples. Um, the easiest way to do that is if you cut into it. So I have some examples here in terms of which is a woody plant. Um, instead of having you guess, I'm just going to let you tell you. Um, so you can quickly see two right off the bat that you can probably guess are woody plants. Plateau live oak um, here. Um, Mustang grape, also still a woody plant. Now the two that are not are the cactus and the giant reed. So a common um, way to figure out if it's woody plant is to cut it. If it's solid like this, um, it's most likely a woody plant. Um, if it's fleshy like this on the inside or hollow on the inside, um, it's not a woody plant. Same thing here as the cactus. Now you can note cacti on your notes or in your data table because it's included in your woody plants guide, even though it's not necessarily a woody plant. Um, please do not take a sample, of course, because you don't want to be touching the cactus. Um, don't do that, um, but you can do it, note it down on your data table. Now let's talk about how we're describing plants. So we need to know a few little things about the anatomy of plants in order to identify them. First, leaf arrangements. In terms of a plant, leaf arrangements normally come in three options. Alternate, meaning that as I move up the stem, I get one. I move up a little bit more and I get one to the other side. Opposite, they're directly across from each other. Or world, they make this kind of um, rounded, um, flowery looking shape. Um, world does not come up as often in terms of our woody plants here in Austin. You're going to see a lot of options of opposite and alternate. And we'll s practice this again on the field trip and you're going to practice it in a little bit. Um, sorry for all the news updates. Um, later on when you practice identifying plants. The next thing you need to figure out is the difference between simple leaves and compound leaves and what an actual leaf is. So the easiest way to do this is when you pick up a leaf or a plant, and we'll practice this again in the workshop, is you'll see this little axillary bud right here. So anytime you look down and you'll see in a little bud there, that means that that's where I'm starting a leaf. So bud, leaf, bud, leaf. So this whole thing is a leaf. Now leaflets are the smaller pieces. So a few um, terms that we need to know, bud, and then the leaf starts. A petiole 
which is going to reference a lot when you pull out your woody plant guide, is this little fleshy part, stemish part, that connects the leaf to the actual stem. So that's what a petiole is. You'll see another petiole. This whole thing is a petiole. It's this like a uh, fleshy stem, stem that connects it to the main um, stem. But be mindful, the most common mistake that might happen in class is students will collect just a leaflet. While leaflets are not very helpful when using the woody plant guide, you need an entire leaf. And you need to know if that entire leaf is alternate or opposite. In terms of this leaf, and in terms of a leaf, it looks like it might be alternate because they're not exactly matching up. Um, but in terms of the actual leaf itself, we're not sure if it's opposite or compound because I don't, or opposite or alternate because I don't have one. Um, so remember, simple leaf just has a single leaflet. Compound has many leaflets. Um, we'll practice this again as we identify plants continuously. You also might see doubly compound, which just means that, okay, I have a petiole, and instead of breaking off into just one leaflet, when I break off, I have many leaflets. So it's just a secondary break. Um, it's doubly compound. Not as many of those also as well in terms of our plant collection. The other part we need to talk about is what a compound leaf looks like. So some of these, these are going to be things commonly referenced when you're looking at the Woody Plants Guide, um, and it's how the compound leaf looks. So are the leaflets arranged in a trifoliate manner? Are the leaflets um, arranged in a pinnate manner, meaning do they point outwards? Or a palmate, do they look like your palm extended? Um, all of those are going to be questions that you're going to be asked when you're using the Woody Plant Guide, and you need to make sure Make sure that you're identifying them correctly, otherwise you'll be sent down the wrong path. Um, a common example right here are two plants. They look very similar to each other right here. These are actually two different plants. So each blue circle contains a different plant. You can see they're both um, trifoliate. Um, and in terms of what they are, maybe you guessed one of them. One of them is poison ivy and one of them is box elder. Okay, box elder is harmless, but as you know, poison ivy um, uh, releases that oil that you definitely don't want to come into contact with and you don't want to bring it into class because we don't want it on us. Um, so we need to be mindful that we're paying attention to the difference between poison ivy and box elder. Um, and the easy way to tell the difference, let's pull up our next image, is how the leaves are arranged. So if you look at poison ivy here on the left, you can see that poison ivy is alternate. So you see this light colored Petiole, light color petiole, they are alternate. That means that they're not directly across from each other. You can also see that they have a little bit more glossy-ish leaves, but poison ivy can come in various um, shades depending on year and where, so I would definitely look at if it's trifoliate and alternate, don't touch it. Box elder, um, definitely much more matted, but it is opposite. So you can see right here, petiole, petiole, they are right across from each other. So this opposite alternate really helps you to determine the difference between plants and something you're going to use over and over and over and over and over again um, as you move forward. So hopefully we can get this done before my computer dies. Um, something else that I want you to pay attention to is knowing when it's a tree and when it's a vine. So here, a common misconception is we can see this tree, cedar elm, and then down here, do you see all this foliage here? That is actually poison ivy. And what students will do is they'll walk up and take one of these samples and think it associates with this organism or tree. That is not true. So you need to make sure that you're paying attention to what is present, um, whether it's a vine or a tree, as you move forward. Two other plants that you're not going to find in your woody plant guide, or two plants you're not going to find in your woody plant guide, heavenly bamboo and Chinese um, botina, um, they are both in your project handout, so if you ever see these two plants as you're, and you're struggling to identify them, make sure to check your project handout. And if I see you with this, I'll make I'll kind of give you a hint, check your project handout, um, because I don't want you to spend all day trying to find a plant that doesn't exist in your book. Um, what I want you to do now is I want you to practice. So I have a data analysis table. Um, there should be a question that's going to pop up in just a second. I want you to pull up that data table and see if you can answer the questions.
I also have a few practice identifying. So what I want you to do is pull out that woody plant guide, turn all the way to the back. It's probably bookmarked. I can't think of the page number off the top of my head. I feel like it's like a hundred and something. It starts way in the back. Um, you'll just skim through the pages until you see dichotomous key. Um, when the dichotomous key starts, anytime you're identifying a plant, you can automatically skip to question 19 as long as it has a leaf. So you can go ahead and skip to question 19, read the question, and the question's going to say, is it simple or compound? And then at the end of the question, you're going to see a number. That number associates to the next question you go to. So if you've never used a dichotomous key, this will be a new little thing. It's always two questions. And then you continue on your path until you get to the identification. So I want you to try, see if you can identify this plant, go through the dichotomous key. Um, how well you do, we'll review them to make sure you know, because I know I'm not there. It's a little harder to do it on your own, but please try um, and submit your answer. Hopefully you got the first one. Let's try again, see if you can identify this one. And last one, I want to see, can you identify this one using an actual photo and not um, a drawn photo? Good job. And great work. I hope that you were able to identify the plants. If you're not, please stop by see me. I'll go over them in class when I can to make sure that you understand the field notes. And we're going to practice them all as well. Um, but remember, details are key as you're working through your um, plants, taking notes, taking pictures, make sure you write down characteristics because hopefully you found out as you move through that dichotomous key, it asks you a lot of specific questions. And it can be very hard to know what they are if you haven't taken notes. And I don't know all the plants off the top of my head. None of us know all the plants off the top of our head. We know most of the common ones, but if you just bring me a leaf, it's very hard for me to identify it without any notes in the field. And that's going to be the first thing I'm going to say and check and say, let me see your notes. Um, so please make sure that you're taking notes. Hopefully this video was helpful. Um, remember, if you have more questions or anything didn't make sense, um, you can definitely ask me in class. Thank you, and you are done. Now what you can do is go ahead and begin working on your Becoming an Expert worksheet. See you all tomorrow.